What's up, guys? UFC 302 is in the books. Pretty good night. I would say the pay-per-view was kind of mid, but the main event definitely saved that card. Pretty exciting matchup between Dustin Poirier and Islam Makachev. In this video, I'm going to be going over all the fights, starting from the first fight of the early prelims to, of course, the main event, which I just rewatched. Um, but feel free to fast forward to the fights you want to hear the breakdowns for. I have a lot of notes. And again, I just rewatched the main event, so I'm going to give a little more insight on that. Before we get to it, though, just be sure to comment, like, subscribe, guys. I appreciate all the support. We're we're off to the moon. I'm trying to get my YouTube to get going. The Instagram and TikTok are doing great. Over 100,000 followers combined. That's pretty cool. So with that being said, let's go. First up, Mitch Raposo versus Andre Lima. Andre Lima won that fight by split decision. And I'm going to be talking about the UFC judges a lot um, in this video because it's ridiculous at this point. The inconsistency. It's something very, that's actually very concerning, I would say, for a lot of these fighters. And DC likes to say, but you're in control of these guys' life. You know what I mean? Like you winning or losing a fight completely changes your trajectory as a, a ufc fighter or you know how fast you get to a title shot how quick you're a contender who you're fighting your money like it's just so much to it so having these guys just constantly throwing up these fucking bullshit scorecards is just awful but anyway reposo um really fast hands he's like this jittery guy he looks really uncomfortable to fight i think he had fantastic cardio he went to 15 minutes he looked like he hadn't he, he didn't break a sweat his energy levels were there the whole time and my big thing was he had a huge issue closing the distance and i ultimately think that's what lost him this fight he could not engage when he needed to engage with andre lima andre lima kept him at bay the whole time he was picky on his shots he was able to close the distance when needed and last but not least he was able to get very effective leg kicks um and i think that's why andre lima won the fight but if you ask me andre lima is definitely definitely uh the more technical guy here and he proved that it, it was a very good performance by him eileen perez versus jocelyn edwards i mean i told people not to bet on this fight i felt like it was going to be a very low level mixed martial arts fight in my opinion it was i was not impressed by either of their performances qgsp i was not impressed by your performance that was a terrible accent i apologize but anyway my note says um edwards just not as aggressive as she should have been in my opinion and she got going at the end she was crisp if you look at her third round striking she starts looking crisp she was kind of looking for a finish there for a little bit but um it just didn't come through for her and eileen perez a lot of mistakes especially on the ground um a lot of missed opportunities from her she had a big moment with that spinning back fist that dropped jocelyn edwards I feel like that was a defining moment of of the fight. Right? Eileen Perez wins in unanimous decision. I again not impressed by that fight at all. Next up, Mickey Gall and Basil Hafez. I just want to say that this was probably the second best fight of the night be, be behind the main event. That was such a a good fun fight. Mickey Gall is one tough son of a gun. Uh, Basil Hafez just a monster in there. He looked like a unit. He is a unit. Um, in my notes, what I will say is Gall did a great job he obviously had the reach advantage great jab great job controlling his distance he he fought the smarter fight watching Basil Hafez was kind of frustrating almost because he he's that guy who's trying to entertain he had a lot of Michael Chandler moments where like he let the guy hit him and he's just like yeah come on hit me again and he's like walking forward with his hands down I'm not a big fan of that I, I am watching it but it makes me nervous especially when money's on the line because it, it's it's pretty crazy um how intense he got right so he didn't give mickey got enough respect in my opinion throughout the fight but it worked out um he would get caught a lot closing the distance so definitely need a little more head movement i felt like he stayed on the center line a little too much um and then he was always looking for the big moment like i mentioned a lot of michael chandler moments and i say michael chandler moments is because we've seen it time and time again he's in there to entertain and i felt like that's what Basil hafez was gonna do and even though it worked out in this fight i just think that he needs to proceed with caution because that's a very dangerous game to play when you're moving up in the rankings so it works out now but later on with the competition he will be facing in the future not the right move but great job by him either way philip Rowe versus jake matthews i had philip Rowe here and i did think he had a lot of opportunities um jake matthews ultimately won by unanimous decision jake matthews is a scary uh, scary dude bro scary fighter um 
Great job closing the distance. Um, fantastic. Just he would come in. He's so explosive. Um, huge hooks. And my only thing about Jake Matthews is I think he should have chopped at Philip Rowe's legs. Philip Rowe was kind of just closing up his guard. And he saw Jake Matthews coming. And he was like, he already felt his power. So he was like, oh, shit. He would kind of close up and stand uh, upright. I think it was a very good opportunity for Jake Matthews to come in with those big hooks. And then start chopping at his legs. I think he would have dominated Philip Rowe even more. Philip Rowe, man. He just looked timid. He looked scared of Jake Matthews. He had he had a great opportunity to really keep Jake Matthews at bay, right? Like, just get a consistent straight punches. You have Jake Matthews coming in, these big hooks. Um, they are coming fast. They are coming hard. But with your with your um, reach advantage, that's like that perfect, all right, let me estab establish a jab to keep him at bay. You hit him with a one-two every once in a while. That straight comes in. And that would have definitely made a huge difference against Jake Matthews. But it just didn't happen. Uh, in my opinion, he was very timid. And I think that's what ultimately cost him the fight. Next up... Um, Grant Dawson versus Joe Selecki. A lot of people are not going to like that fight. Grant Dawson is a scary dude, bro. Um, just so aggressive. He he wants to take people like Khabib would, uh, bring him to the center of the ocean, and just drown them. That's literally what that guy's all about. He got a little overzealous in the beginning. He like ran straight towards Joe Selecki. Um, he almost got himself in. A, he was in a very dangerous situation because Joe Selecki had a nice guillotine going. Um, ultimately, he couldn't do anything, but that fight was 15 minutes of Grant Dawson on top of Joe Selecki just ground and pound and 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 hitting the shit out of him there was nothing joe selecki could do um and there was a reason grant dawson was a heavy favorite and we saw why so definitely the aggressor um again a lot of fans are not going to like how he fights so that's not going to be good for him as far as matchmaking goes but you can't deny the guy a great performance next up halton almeida versus alexander romanov god just rough rough um Halton Almeida, I mean, we know he's a serious contender. Alexander Romanov in that fight, just he looked gar like garbage, bro. Literally, physically, as a mixed martial artist, that, that guy does not is not in shape, bro. And um, I'm no one to speak, but, I mean, I'm not in there fighting um, on a UFC card, right? So Halton Almeida, bro, two minutes in, gets that, that nice submission, just took his back early in the fight, and, and he finishes him. Not much to say there. He's a serious contender. They got to throw serious contenders at him. I know he got finished his last fight, but that's just ridiculous. Next up, a very disappointing um, fight for me, Cesar Almeida versus Roman Kapilov. Roman Kapilov, I like this guy a lot. Um, just a very dangerous striker, but we know that Cesar Almeida is um, a kickboxer. He's even fought Alex Pereira and beat him in kickboxing, so... I guess some of my my prediction for that fight was kind of expecting too much from another kickboxer. Cesar Almeida just lo looked old out there. He was slow to get going. He just didn't do enough, in my opinion. Roman Kapilov, also, I didn't think he looked fantastic. I thought he timed his... Um, his shots really well as far as his takedowns i thought that worked out really well for him but he he concerned me a lot because he has no cardio man he was done at the end like when the rep stood them up in the third round with like two minutes left i was like oh snap caesar almeida has a real chance to finish kapilov because he was exhausted but again caesar almeida just absolutely has nothing for the ground game no takedown defense there's a lot of work to do for caesar almeida um again he started getting going there in that third round but once roman kapilov threw him on the ground there was nothing to do it was crazy like literally no grappling whatsoever um so yeah Cesar Almeida has a lot of work to do my fault for not picking Roman Kapilov but again I'm a little turned off by Roman Kapilov's um cardio that's very concerning moving forward for him when he's fighting a complete mixed martial artist so more to come from that and that's another fight actually another split decision where no one no one judging that fight no fan should have given Cesar Almeida two rounds there nobody maybe he gets around but to a scorecard his way is just absolutely ridiculous so the second fight of the night that goes to split that shouldn't have been a split next up randy brown versus zaleski dos santos pretty straightforward fight at that randy brown again uh one of the guys who was able to control the distance i think this fight actually had a lot of mixed martial arts in it there was some takedowns there was some clinching there was some good striking um pretty good performance by both guys um i'd say i didn't write much of my notes on this fight so i'm gonna leave it at it was a solid fight to watch um ultimately randy brown won in decision next up nico price versus alex morano again this is their second fight they fought in 2017 when nico price um 
knocked out Alex Morano. Here, Nico Price gets a decision victory. I am so disappointed by both guys. That was the sloppiest MMA fight I've seen in a long time. Alex Morano just looks out of shape. The way he fights, he's like stumbling. He always almost looks hurt. It's weird, dude. And um, Nico Price, I feel like he won with um, just more volume. And that, that's what ultimately got him the decision. Not much to say about that fight either. I just think that was a very sloppy fight. I didn't enjoy watching that. And I also thought Alex Morano was going to win that fight. So, all right. What everybody wants to know about. Next up, Kevin Holland versus Alexa Chuk. I had Alexa Chuk just because I am very... I'm not going to say unimpressed. That's not the word. Kevin Holland's a very good fighter. But you don't know what Kevin Holland you're getting when he walks into the octagon. And that's very concerning. That's why I usually don't bet on Kevin Holland. But I thought Alexa Chuk had a good chance in this fight. Um, but Kevin Holland came out to perform. In reality, he got dropped early. And that's what set up the submission because Alexa Chuk kind of got overzealous. He thought he was going to finish the fight. And Kevin Holland slips into that arm bar. Now, he ultimately wins in a minute and a half by technical submission. It's an arm bar because the ref stopped it without electric chuck tapping. There was some sus movement, in my opinion. I feel like he was just about to tap, and then, you know, Herb Dean was able to just stop it right then and there. I think it was Herb who, who repped that fight. But um, Kevin Holland was destroying his arm. I mean, that, that could have been a career-ending injury if Kevin Holland really just snap that arm i mean it was going in the opposite direction it, it should not have been going that way so solid performance by kevin holland a lot of people had him winning by submission it was a good call on their part but electric chuck definitely had a window he just missed it he got overzealous and he gave he trapped himself when he gave kevin holland his arm it's that simple next up um a huge disappointment for a lot of people but it's exactly what i expected sean strickland wins a decision against paula costa so Paula Costa, in my opinion, at one point in time, he was a real deal contender. Um, when he faced uh, Israel Adesanya, obviously he lost. I think he just changed for the worse. I mean, he's never been the same fighter. I agree with that statement. Um, he doesn't fight the, the same. I just don't think his style is successful with these high level guys. Um, he's very inconsistent. He's not always fighting. Sean Strickland, someone who's sparring like seven times a week. It's and he did what he's consistently done and proven that it's just annoying for everybody. He walked him down. Jab. He's in his shell. Deep. Walk you down. And Paulo Costa was running the whole fight. The whole fight. Some heavy kicks were successful. I mean, he had good leg kicks and stuff, but the guy spent the whole fight running. It was exactly my prediction. I said, Sean Strickland wins a decision. And it's crazy for like a middleweight fight, these type of guys to make it to decision, but nobody doing anything. And then Sean Strickland waits for the last 15 seconds, starts jumping off the fence and shit, doing crazy stuff. So to me, he's just not an exciting fighter. He's a very annoying person to fight for sure. Just he is so persistent. And the way he stands upright and his little teep is just he's very uncomfortable. And you could see when the guys fight him, man, they're not they're not having a good time in there. But um, yeah, Sean Strickland got a, a split decision victory. And that's the last one. Um, in my opinion, I don't think Paulo Costa won one round. So the fact that it's split is just ridiculous again. And I want to know what you guys think in the comment. But if you have judges who score a fight for one fighter, right? So, for example, let's say five rounds to zero. Anybody scores it that way. And you have a ref who gives it to the other guy. There's a huge discrepancy in your judging. Like, there's a huge issue. Because there should be no world, no mixed martial arts competition, no, no time where you should have that big of a gap in the judges and that's just my opinion it can't be 50 45 one way and 49 46 another that's crazy there's an issue there obviously there's either different criteria or who knows what they're watching or something is rigged and that's literally what we're seeing in the ufc and it happened three times yesterday three times where someone who barely won a round is winning the fight and getting a scorecard with their name on it it's, it's just ridiculous last but not least islam makachev versus dustin the diamond poirier that fight did not go as I expected. I would have put a lot of money saying that that fight doesn't go into the championship rounds. My money said Islam Makachev wins this fight. My heart says wanted Dustin to win. And definitely in front of his daughter, you know, third time uh, fighting for the title. I thought it was a big moment for him. In reality, 
he had a great fight. Dustin Poirier really performed. I mean, one of the judges had it 2-2. I didn't. I said maybe 3-1. In reality, probably 4-0, but maybe 3-1. But someone even had it 2-2 going into round five. And I just thought Dustin Poirier performed so well. The way he defended um, Islam's takedowns, the way he uh, defended the submission attempts. He got into big trouble in the first round. I think he spent four minutes on the ground with Islam Makachev on top of you. That is dangerous. And then finally... When um, Islam gets that body triangle and he's looking for a choke, there must have been like two minutes left in the round. And he stayed away from everything. And he did a really good job keeping up with Islam Makachev. What I am going to say is Dustin Poirier, I'm not going to say he wasn't aggressive because there was points where he was very aggressive, but I definitely thought he was a little more timid. I think he wasn't taking as many risks, which obviously he couldn't do against Islam Makachev, but I think that would have been the best way for him to win the fight, to just catch him. You know he wasn't going to outgrapple him. He wasn't going to win a decision here. I think he needed to take more risk, and that's just my opinion. Of course, just the MMA casual saying that. Islam Makachev, on the other hand, just a beautiful fight. Um, man, what a dangerous guy. Islam Makachev, man, what a guy. He really is one of the best lightweights to ever live, man. He 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 might be better than Habib, bro. His striking is impeccable. Um, I like this clinch work, this fight. It would make me a little nervous because I knew that Dustin Poirier, that was going to open up his ability to throw some hooks after when they were separating. But his takedowns, just crazy. His submission attempts, fantastic. And I just want to say that sequence at the end is 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 world class. That sweep, getting on top of him getting to his back kind of kind of alluding to him going for a di for a guillotine making Dustin Poirier think that and then just finding the darts is just incredible and Dustin Poirier said he went out um after he tapped so you know he kind of lost consciousness there for a second I think it was it was a great fight again I didn't see this fight making it to the fifth round and it did which was very impressive on Dustin Poirier's part I think the better fighter won it's that simple um I think that fight was very exciting i think it was fan pleasing and i think ultimately it saved the card because the card was pretty rough between the judges and a lot of lackluster performances i thought the card was kind of mid so islam makachev and dustin poirier hats off to both of them man just incredible fighters um an incredible night in history for both guys and yeah that's it that's all i got guys the mma casuals out of here have a good one be sure to subscribe i hope you like the breakdowns let me know what you think below